it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that, that shocked me. They don't make people that, that big. The way it moved, uh, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. This is Lynn Moore from Dallas, Texas. We're about to go on another amazing journey with Sasquatch Chronicles. Florida waterways at night. It's a place where you could refresh your soul, recharge, a perfect night to fire up the old airboat and go out gigging frogs. Nothing could ruin a perfect night like this. Or so my guest tonight thought. So I ended up pulling up there and I shut off the motor and I jumped off my front seat onto my bow and underneath my seat, I got basket seats. I had my thermos down there, so I got my thermos out, poured a cup of coffee and, and then, uh, it was a few seconds later, something just made the most god-awful noise I've ever heard in my life. It was just a shriek, a screaming. That's when the mud started flying. Something hit the side of my boat. I didn't see what hit the side of my boat. I turned on my headlight to look in the back of my boat, and a big old piece of mud hit the back of my boat, hit my rudders, and I looked up and over to see what was throwing the mud and I looked in the direction where it was coming from some flew over my head and and that's when I seen what I saw and it was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life welcome to the show everyone thanks for being here tonight got a great show planned for you tonight we're gonna be chatting with Todd and Todd comes to us from Florida and he was out on his airboat late one night gigging frogs. And as he's coming to shore, he was hearing this weird screaming noise. He couldn't place what animal it was. But once he got to shore, uh, something started throwing stuff at his boat. And when he looked up, he was 25, 30 feet away from one of these creatures. And it was mad. It was pissed. And this encounter has really affected Todd most of his life. And I'm so glad he was willing to come on tonight and share it. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome Todd to the show. Todd, thanks for coming on. Hi, how you doing, sir? 
I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking, Todd. And I know you had quite the encounter back in the early 90s. Uh, If you would, would you just kind of start from the very beginning, kind of take us back to that moment? Uh, I know you were on an airboat, but if you would, just kind of start from the beginning, kind of tell us what you were doing and and walk us into what happened. What did you see? Okay. Um, I was out on the river. I was going to do some frogging. And I usually go out there, like I, like I said, a few hours before, so I can just pretty much get a a hand a hand on to see how many people are going to be in this in the gen, in the general area. If there is any going to be anybody there, just to, uh, to to go frogging. If there's going to be too many people in that area, I would have moved to another area. But it's not all the time is there people out there. It's just I usually like to try to go out there a little early. And um, an area that I go to is known in this area as, as Oaks. And it's a big oak head. And it's about, I-95 is the closest main road and we're probably a good, I don't know, about 20 miles off the road. And it's all marshland. So the only real way to get out there is an airboat. And uh, so I was, running along and I uh, was going out to the oak head and uh, pulled up in there. And as I was pulling up in there, I seen something shoot off into the bushes and I waved it off as a hog. There's a lot of wildlife around in this area. It butts back. It butts up against a farmer who owns a lot of property there and they put a lot of hay out there. So it brings a lot of deer in the area and it brings a lot of hogs in the area. So I just pretty much passed it off as maybe it was just a hog taking, you know, bringing up in there. And it may have just been a hog. I never knew it was the big guy. And, and I'm sure if there was the big guy, I would have seen the, the sheer size after I know. But anyway, um, I pulled my boat up in the yoke head and I spun it around. I, Usually try to get the front of the boat to point the river. So it's when I get ready to go, I just fire up and just, you know, get the boat out to the river. And, uh, so I ended up pulling up there and I shut off the motor and I jumped off my front seat onto my bow and underneath my seat, I got basket seats. I had my thermos down there. So I got my thermos out and got some coffee, poured a cup of coffee and, and, uh, when I went up to get back up into the seat, I heard something really going. It looked sounded like a freight train just running through the palmettas. It was just tearing up palmettas. And, you know, I felt a little safe because I'm up on a boat. I'm probably a good uh, stand on the bow. I'm about four feet above the ground. When I stand up on my seat package, I'm a good eight feet off the ground. So you're pretty safe when you're standing up on the seat package where your seat is. And, uh, so it, then something started just banging the ground, it just hitting the ground. And I could feel the vibration in the ground from whatever was hitting. And then uh, it was a few seconds later, something just made the most god-awful noise I've ever heard in my life. It was just a shriek, a screaming. It was just making all kinds of noise. And then that's when the mud started flying. And uh, some mud flew out. Something hit the side of my boat. I didn't see what hit the side of my boat. I turned on my headlight, looked in the back of my boat, and a big old piece of mud hit the back of my boat, hit my rudders. And I looked up and over to see what was throwing the mud, and I looked in the direction where it was coming from. Some flew over my head, and, and that's when I seen what I saw. And it was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. And I, I didn't know. It just, it was horrid. Sorry to put it that way. It was just no, horrid. No. It scared me. It was the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I didn't know if it was really what I was seeing, or if it was I. There's oak trees all in there, but the color of them, he was a lot lighter than any of the trees, so you could pretty much make out what was standing there was standing there, and it was huge. It was super huge. The biggest thing I've seen in my life. And it just, 
it scared me to the core. And uh, he he was big. He was huge. And he was pumped up, and he was very upset. <laughs> he was very upset. And, and it just, I was so scared. It was just, I don't know where else to go with it. Yeah, no, I, hear that. I, was, I hear you. I mean, they're terrifying just, to see. I mean, especially since, let me ask you before we talk about descriptions and everything, what did you think of Bigfoot prior to this particular encounter? I mean, what was kind of your mindset if someone said, what do you think about Bigfoot? What would you have said prior to experiencing this? Uh, I don't know. I never not believed in it. Uh, there's, always, uh, there's always, I guess, uh, a chance. I mean, I I don't know. Uh, there, was not, there was a story of, not long ago. There was a Chinese fisherman, and he kept on telling all the uh, people out there in China that there's these giant squid. Nobody believed them. Nobody believed them. And then one day he caught one. It was 28 foot long and brings it in there and shows them and he brings them to the spot. And then they bring a submersible down there and there's these 20 and 30 and 40 foot squid down there. So, you know, but for the longest time, they've never believed in them because they said that they could never be real. And they were. You were kind of on the fence then is what you're saying, Todd. You're, you didn't really believe or disbelieve one way or another? Is that kind of what you're... Right. Thinking? Yeah, that's yeah. about it. Not that they ever did ever catch one, but I would never... If somebody said that they'd seen it, okay, yeah, I'd believe them. Yeah, I hear you. So you roll up on this in, in this airboat, and you're getting off your boat, or you're starting to kind of make your way, and then it starts throwing mud at your at your boat... And you look up, can you describe for the audience what you saw? I mean, and use as much detail as you can, but, it, you know, for someone who's never seen one, you're looking right at this saying, can you describe what you saw? Yeah, it was super huge. It was a big dude. just, And it didn't look like a man, but it didn't look like a monkey either. I mean, I hear some people say they look like gorillas and all. It wasn't. A, it didn't look like a gorilla. And uh, it had a brow ridge all the way across its face. It had a big mouth, super huge mouth. The eyes were kind of sunk in, and his face looked real leathery, like brown leather and rough. And he didn't have a lot of, like, real long hair or anything. The hair was, like, brown, light brown, like a leathery color. Um, it had a beard. You know, it had hair around its neck area. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but he had junk, you know, you can see that. And he was just ungodly size. I hear, I've listened since then to certain stories on the internet and everything where they say they're super huge upstairs, their body and upper body and everything, and their skin and their legs are real skinny. Uh, it wasn't anything like that. The, the legs were huge. His arms were huge. His whole body was huge. And he was just in the front of my boat. I'd say he's a good four foot wide, and he was every bit of that. He was huge. He was just a big mountain of meanness, and he was very upset if I didn't have that. Yeah. No, I hear you, and I know it's terrifying. I know it's hard for you to talk about it, and I know you struggle talking about it because it it does take you back in that moment when when you when you're experiencing this. Um, what was his facial expression? I mean, what did it change at all, or? No, not at all. He just was looking at me like he wanted to kill me. He just looked like he was mad, very mad. His mouth wasn't open at that point. And it had, I mean, all the noises that they made before that I heard, I, it had have been that it made the noises. And I'm hoping to God it was only one there. For all I know, it could have been more. I don't know. I was just mostly focused and fixed on him. Because I was at at that point then when I really knew who was looking at me and everything, I was trying to figure out in my mind how I was going to be able to turn around and fire up my boat and get out of there alive. Because I, I didn't want to turn my back to it because 25, 30 feet from where I was standing on my seat package was this guy, it was the big guy. And it would have took no time. I mean, he would have been on me. Before I would have been doing, if he, if he really wanted to, I guess he could have been on me 
and there would have been no chance. I mean, it would have folded me up like a pretzel. And I'm a big guy. I'm I'm right at six foot, weigh about two forty, and I'm nothing next to this thing. It was it was just hard. It was really hard. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, I can imagine, man. It's it's terrifying. And every time you talk about it, you kind of relive that moment. I'm sure you're looking at its face right now as we're talking, and that that seems to happen when you recount it. Um, was it creature? St- was he still the whole time, or was he rock? Was he doing anything? He was just he was standing there, and his arms were going back and forth, and it just looked like he was pumping up. And, and it just and it just you could see you see the outline of his muscles and his arms, and you could see the outlines of the muscles in his upper body. Uh, his legs were just big. They were huge. I mean, they were big. But I really didn't see any outline or anything like that in the legs. The upper body was big. I mean, and it and he was just moving his arms back and forth to look like he was pumping up. And when you say back and forth, do you mean like he was swaying back and forth, or what do you mean when you say his arms were? He was swinging his both arm, both arms were moving back and like forward and back, like you would pump up. You know how you? Oh, I, I guess you have like a barbell on your and you pump it. Like uh, like curling, but not that high. Maybe they were maybe moving a foot or two back and forth. And what seemed like forever, I don't even, my boat was running. I, I guess what happened was I, at that point, my knee, I think really what happened was my, my legs were buckling and my knee went down on my seat package. And maybe I just thought hit my starter button because I really don't remember firing up the boat and my boat was running. As soon as I realized my boat was running, I just, I mean, I just, I held onto the seat and I nailed that frigging gas and the boat just started taking off. And then everything behind you is just like a big, huge tornado because you can't see shit then. Any, anything that's on the ground, I got a, the prop on it's a 74 inch prop and it's just, and it's turning 600 miles an hour, you know? So it's just a big, huge weather storm behind me. It was anything that's on the ground is in the air and it's just, but when my boat was moving and I didn't let up on it, I just held onto the seat and it just kept on going. I was able to, I turned my body around. I sat down in the seat and I had that gas pinned. And I flew out from there so fast. When I hit the river, the whole front of the bow went underwater. I took on a godly amount of water. And I, I'm, I, I wasn't really at that point, wasn't really concerned about that. And I didn't care if I can, could have got on the other side of the river before the boat flipped or sunk. At least I would have been that much farther away from it. But I didn't sink it. And the boat came, you know, the bow came up. Finally, I probably took on about 30 gallons of water. And I just had it pinned and it got on a plane and it's a pretty, it's a 540 cubic inch engine. So it's got, it's an aircraft engine. So it's got a lot of power and it got me on a plane and I did not stop. I run, hooked it right and went all the way out to Lake Weiner, which is a big lake. And I got in the middle of the lake and I shut the boat off and that's where I sat until light. I was afraid to go back that way because if, I went back that way and went right after the Oaks, probably a good 250, maybe 350 yards. The narrow, the river gets real narrow to where it's probably about 10 feet wide. And I was afraid that if I went that way, he would have just been able to pick me right off the boat. I kind of figured I must have really upset him when I took off. Cause I'm sure I blew the living hell out of him. With all everything, you know, it already looked like he was not very happy with me. Yeah, and I want to um, ask you. I want to ask you about that later. So you go home. Did you tell anyone about your encounter after this happened? I went right to my mom's house. At the time, I was dating my wife. I didn't say anything to them just yet. It was a little while after that that I say something, and I actually brought it up to her dad. Her dad pretty much grew up on that river. And I brought it up to him, which he didn't say, I believe you or I didn't believe you. 
you know, he's like, yeah, it's stuff like that could be out there. And, but, you know, he didn't really support me or he didn't support me, I guess. You know, and then later on, when me and him got a lot closer and I married his daughter and everything, we've talked and stuff. And he said that he thought he had seen stuff like that out there before, but he just never let it cross his mind and he just let it pass on. He didn't, it's not like he wanted to know, but he really didn't want to know. And really, after what I that I have seen, I would rather not want to know. Yeah. I wish I never would have seen it. It really ruined a lot for me. I really love going out there. I've been going out there before. I, that happened for 20 years. Frogging all in that area, camping out there at night. A couple of my friends had some floating cabins. I'd go out there at night. Me and, and at the time I was dating my wife, we would go out there and go spend the night in the cabins and stuff and nothing really ever scared me. But ever I've, since then, I don't, I don't go out there. I don't go out there at all. Yeah. I won't go out there at night. At night. And in that area, I haven't been back to that area in over 20 years. I, I, it's hard to blame you. I'll drive by it. Yeah. I'll drive by it, but I won't. If, you know, I'm usually way out in the river. I, I look up there and you can see there's a pavilion in there and a bunch of trees, but you won't catch me driving in there. I won't go in there at all. Even in daylight, I don't go there. You know, most encounters, people come around corners and bam, they're there. Or guys are up in tree stands and they'll see them come out from the, the wood line. But to pull up in an airboat and this thing's 20, 30 feet away from you and it's pissed, and it's obviously focused on you. Uh, that's a whole different encounter. That's definitely a whole different encounter. Let me ask you. So you're 20, 30 feet away from the thing. You're six foot, 240 pounds. How how much bigger do you think it was than you? It was. Now, if I'm sitting in my seat package, I'm right at nine foot, nine foot high off the ground. Um, when I was up on my seat package, I was not looking like even with him. I was looking a little bit down on him. So he was a little bit, maybe a little, his, if I was standing on my seat package, like I said, my head level is right about nine foot from the ground. I was looking, he would be, if he looked straight ahead, yeah, I'd say he was probably looking at my chest. So I'd probably put him about eight and a half foot. It's pretty big. Yeah, he was wide. He was, he was wide as the front of my boat. Yeah, let me ask you, when when you were looking at the face of this thing, you said it didn't really look human, it didn't really look like a gorilla. What what would you compare it to? I know you've probably seen, I know you have seen, um, everyone's seen the Patterson-Gimlin film. How would you compare it to that creature in that film compared to what you saw? Um, I, know, I, I didn't really ever look at the head on that one. I've looked at, I've went online and I've looked at different pictures of them. And I've seen pictures that look like him, but everything they show online is all black or like black and gray. He wasn't black or black and gray, but their head, his head wasn't like, you know, how would they call that? Like a pointed head? Like, uh, yeah, the conical, <laughs> conical head. Yeah, the conical. It wasn't like that. It was, uh, he, he had a big, his, and it wasn't like a gorilla either. It was just like big and round and wide, the head. He ain't, he didn't have a neck. It was no neck. It was just a big head on a super huge body, sort of like a like maybe like like a Neanderthal guy, like a Neanderthal man, without a neck. There was no neck there. What do you, what do you think set it off? Later on, thinking about it, maybe he was right close to maybe catching him some dinner. And I scared it all away for him. I don't know. He was just mad. I could tell. I can usually tell when I make somebody mad <laughs> being married as long as I have. <laughs> I've been. Um, he was mad. Yeah. And I was, and, and, and me noticing that the, the, his arms moving and he was pumped up. I noticed that I just didn't know what to do. And then, you know, you know, uh, you know, Pretty much my whole life, I've known what to do. <laughs> uh, I, what I do for a living, I work on really, very, really important equipment, you know, for the government, uh, space program. 
and a lot of things happen and you always got to be quick on your toes to know how to fix stuff and you know how to work stuff out in your head real quick and 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 you know what to do you know i didn't know what to do i, I was just not ready for it at all and i wouldn't know what to do again if i ever seen one again i don't know and it just it boggles my mind and it scares me to the core I just, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out ways of answering your questions and no, you're thinking doing fine. in a logical way. Yeah, no, you're doing But fine. everything about it wasn't logical. Right. I get <laughs> you know? it. I completely get it. <laughs> and it just, and then I'm, and then the emotion comes, you know? Yeah. No, I get it completely. I mean, it's, I'm sorry. No, it's terrifying to run into these things, man. I mean, uh, I mean, anyone who tells you they're not terrified when they run in, run into these things for the first time is probably lying to you. Well, I don't understand is how you know. I watch, I've watched stuff on on TV, and I've and oh no, oh, we can't wait to find one. And I'm like, you may maybe maybe want to rethink that. You know, when you see these, like I watched that program, the Bigfoot Finding Bigfoot. And they're all running and running around the woods looking for one of these things. I don't know if they really would want to really run into one. Yeah. 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 No, especially the one you ran into. You know what's fascinating is that area where you're at. I've actually had a lot of people. Well, not a lot. I've had a handful of people on the show that I've actually had encounters there. One guy ended up in the hospital. Uh, He thought... um, uh, well, I won't say it like that in these times. He thought, an, I was going to say a black man, he thought an African-American man was throwing rocks at him. So he picked up rocks and threw it back. Well, this thing came out. It wasn't having that. And uh, he was harmed by it. But the creature that you saw wasn't black. What what color was it? I, I think I missed that in the beginning. Brown. Brown. It was like a light, leathery brown. The whole entire thing is, his body was all like a light, leathery brown, and his face suit was also there was no black or nothing on him. It's, I'd say if, uh, you know, really thinking back at it, I, there was nothing on him that was black. And I didn't really look into the eyes or anything like that to see what color his eyes were. I was more more or less concerned about being able to get the hell out of there. Yeah. I don't blame you. you know? I don't blame you. I would have gotten the hell out of there, just, too. Yeah, you know, the sheer size of it, it was enough to ruin it for me i mean i was it scared me to hell this thing here it could have it could have got me no problem it could have got me it could have got me with no problem and god knows what it could have done I, yeah that's it i was just for the lot for the as quick as it went but it feels like an eternity i guess when you're going through it, it was just knowing that i was gonna at one point have to turn around to get in the seat to get out of there and and I was trying to I don't know maybe in my mind prepare myself for getting snatched out of the seat and ripped apart or beat the hell out of and I didn't know how to do do that or and I was trying to really try to get around it but I just had that feeling that it was going to happen anyway you know <laughs> and I just thank God that it didn't happen Yeah, one thing that's fascinating about your encounter, Todd, is uh, a lot of eyewitnesses who run into aggressive ones, they'll kind of describe what you're describing. I mean, it's almost like, um, you know, uh, I hate to compare it to this, like a guy in a bar that wants to fight. What's the first thing he does? He puffs his chest chest up, walks around like a baboon, like he's trying to uh, get in the moment to where he wants to fight. And I bring that up to say this, a lot of times with these things, you'll find that same behavior where they, it's almost like they have to work up the courage to come at you the way he was swinging his arms. It's he was working up that courage to attack. Right. Was that kind of your so impression you think- as far as what was going on? Yeah. But I, I just kind of figured that I was done for, you know, that, I don't know, I just, it was just really, it was, it was, it was, it was a time in my life that I would never, ever want to repeat. I understand. You know? I understand. Thinking what? back now, you know, when you can actually sit and really think about it and stuff, yeah, maybe, you know, but at the time that it was happening, I, I was just pretty much trying to work out in my head how I was going to get out of their period. 
Yeah, I bet it feels like a dream a little bit. You know, it's it's kind of that moment yeah. where you get away from the situation. And you're like, God, did that really just happen? You know what I mean? Uh, I, after all that, I sat there in the middle of the lake. Like I said, I was scared. I didn't want to go back anywhere near there. And just trying to figure out my mind, did I really see that? Did I really just go through that? But I know I did. I just more or less was just trying to regain all my bodily bodily functions, I guess. I'm sorry to laugh, but no, now I, I can it. laugh about it. Yeah, of course. You know? Of course, yeah. And try to get to a frame of mind where then I can start making some uh, decisions on what am I going to do now, you know? And then, But I still didn't think clear-minded for quite a while afterwards because, like I said, I, I stayed out on the lake for pretty much the whole night because I was scared to death of driving back that way, even being in that vicinity and having to go de- back down the river and fear that this thing would easily snatch me off the boat. And now really thinking about it, would have that happened? I don't know. I don't know if it really would have, but I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah. when they're, they're unpredictable, that's what I always say is their behavior is very, very unpredictable. You don't know yeah. quite, you, you almost kind of have to read this situation. And I think in your situation, I think you were in trouble. I think if you would have made yeah. one wrong move or hung around for one second longer, I think you would have been, you've been in big trouble because this thing was yeah, ready to I, fight, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I got that. I just thank the Lord Jesus that I didn't black out and that I was able to get out of there. I thank him every day when I wake up, getting to wake up. But I, I do thank God that I do thank God that I was able to get out of there. Even like now, thinking about it, I still don't know how I got out of it. You know, like I did, because I, like I said, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand what exactly what you mean, Todd. You know, and it's, it is terrifying to run into these things. You know, a lot of times when we're in high stress situations, it's kind of amazing. I've been reading up a lot on this, on this sort of thing. Uh, some of your senses won't work. And I'll give you an example. So in a situation like you're in, um, a lot of times you'll quit smelling or you'll quit, uh, you'll quit hearing. And like all your focus goes to your vision. And it's kind of a unique phenomenon that happens to a lot of eyewitnesses. And it makes me wonder if that's why a lot of people don't smell the smell because you're in a moment to where it's t- tunnel vision. This thing's pissed. It's 20, 30 feet away from you. Um, and you don't have necessarily a quick exit. You know, once a boat's going and you're in the direction you want to go, then you got a quick exit. But um, do you remember any smells or anything like that as far as uh, being so close nope. to this thing? No, nope, not at all. Nothing. I, did, uh, I was probably, before I even seen it, the screaming and that and the noise the thing made had me already, I think, trying to, I had already got me in a frantic state. I'd have to say that. I was already in a frantic state to where maybe I wouldn't have realized. I, I never heard anything like that in my life. And I still, I, I go on the internet and I listen to different times. I look at videos on YouTube and everything, and I've never heard anything like what I heard. Uh, maybe some, maybe like a piece of the howling part of it. It had that in there, but it was just, just god awful scream like the devil was coming from the ground, and then it, then it just started making all these wild noises. So I was already kind of thrown off from that. I think a lot of it, and then when all the mud started flying everywhere, I mean, I was just I really I was like, how how where how is that coming from? You know, I really think about it. What what throws mud? You know. I don't see how a hog is going to throw any mud or a deer. That's really all it's out there. There's cows out there, but they never would get in around there. And I mean, it was, there was pieces of mud that would fill a five-gallon bucket up. You know, some of it had grass and all crap in it. I mean, and that mud hit my rudders. It was a big old slab of mud that hit my back of my rudders. That, that scared the living hell out of me, that. 
seeing that. And then when I looked up, before I really got over the side of my cage, the cage is behind me, it was flying over my head. And that's when I seen it. When I seen the whole body, his whole body moving. And because he was throwing all the mud. And that's when I seen him right there, like directly right behind me, 25, 30 feet away. What's kind of the, you know, looking at him and seeing him now in your mind and at the moment, what's kind of the one thing that stands out to you the most? The one thing that you remember the most about his physical his body, his body, his body, he was huge. I didn't think anything could ever be that big next to like an elephant or something, you know, and anything in our area, it was just, he was in shape and in the form of a man. Because, you know, he had arms and legs, and then it's just his mass. It was just huge. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. It was breathtaking and something I'd never want to see again. Yeah. How- uh, I'd never, I'd, I would never ever want to see one. And I, like I said, I, I got, I, I don't know, I would, sorry about that. It kind of chokes me up some. But um, it obviously still affects you today. H- how has it affected you, though? I mean, do you go out now? Or are you able to go out on your airboat and kind of do what? Yeah, we, you- I go, I go South River, which is probably about about twenty five, thirty miles away from that area. Um, if I go North River, we'll go, and I have to go by there. I stay in the river, and I'll run up through the lakes once i'm through the lakes and all that i'm pretty good i don't go out at night i don't go anywhere out there at night anymore i used to go even south river and we got the government built some cabins down there but i used to go down there all the time by myself and go spend the night in the cabins and stuff and i don't go out there at all anymore at night i I really you know that really robbed a lot from me i remember back after before this all happened my big thing was having children which I i had two boys and getting to spend time and do stuff like that out there with my boys. And I don't, we never did it. I don't, we don't go camping out there. If I, if I go camping, we go into another state and it's usually where if it's a campground with a lot of people in it, I won't do the rural thing anymore. Yeah. Cause I don't ever know. I just, and I, that's always stuck. That's always in the back of my head forever. Yeah. I understand completely what you mean. It'll always be in the back of your mind. And even with time, you never really forget it. You know what I mean? No. No, you don't. What What do you think that they are, Todd? I mean, you got a really good look at this thing, and you're really close to this thing, way closer than most people. If someone were to ask you, what what is Sasquatch, what would you say to them? Probably what I've seen. If that's, if that's what I've seen. Um... Big, huge Neanderthal-looking man, I guess. If that's what they are, I, nah, my seeing what I see on uh, on the internet, maybe they have different uh, races, like we have different races in the human race. Maybe they have different races in uh, the Bigfoot race, and that's why some of them have conjugal heads, some of them have the round heads, maybe. Stuff that I picked up on watching that stuff on TV and looking on the internet to find stuff out. I guess um, the one that I seen, you know, like I said, I've seen some online that had similar head shape and size. You know, they says on the internet they were they can get up to like over ten foot tall. So maybe one that I had was a uh, I don't know I don't know how old he would have been, but. He was at the age where his testosterone level was high because he was definitely pumping. Sometimes I have that ill effect, I guess, on people to get them mad. <laughs> yeah. He, he he was mad. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. You know, it's bizarre. Yeah. A lot of their behavior, sometimes you'll see where they will uh, do things that seem very human-like, and then you'll hear things where it's very non-human-like. In your situation, you're in this airboat, and it starts grabbing whatever it can grab and throwing it at you. It reminds me of uh, like a chimpanzee type behavior or like a like a non-human primate type behavior. 
of throwing stuff at you, you know, and it's, and it amazes me because he doesn't really have to throw anything at you. All he has to do is kind of come in your general direction and, and puff up and most people are going to leave. I don't care how big and bad you are. You're going to leave uh, when these things show oh, up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. I would, if I would have seen the thing walking sideways, just through the bushes, I would have been out of there so darn quick. Just the sheer size of it was, it would have ruined it for me, period. And, you know, and seeing it as much as I've seen is too much, in my mind was too much. And I don't ever want to see that ever again. It was just, you know, it was nothing like they try to make out on TV. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, I know a lot of these pe- people really relish the, uh, the chance of actually seeing one of these things, you know, and, uh, um, I, not for me, it never, it didn't happen that way. Yeah, I don't ever was, want to see one again. Yeah. Yours was kind of yeah, surprised it's there, you know, and I understand what you're saying about finding Bigfoot. I mean, I, I like Bobo. I like Cliff. They're, they're nice guys. And I told Moneymaker one time, I said, what are you going to do if one shows up? You guys are out there banging on trees and screaming. What happens if one shows up and he's pissed? Then what do you get? What do you think? Bobo's going to fight him off? I love Bobo, but Bobo ain't going to fight this thing off. And you guys are screwed if this thing comes in, you know? So, uh, but they have a different mindset. I think that they think that they're peace loving creatures. Uh, that's not, that's not quite true, in my opinion. Yes, yes. Sir. I, I tried to find, in my mind, trying to find diff- reading different stories and stuff like that that I found on the internet. And to see if, you know, maybe just, I don't know, maybe to put my mind at some type of ease from what I've seen. But I know what I've seen. I know it just ruined it. I don't know. I just, it was just really, really frightening for me. It was very, very scary for what I've seen. I don't ever want to go through that again. And that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. One, one last question I want to it, ask you. It, and I know it's traumatic, but why do you think he didn't attack? Why do you, I mean, you're pretty much easy pickings right there. I don't know if he, maybe he was already, may, I'm hoping to God that, I don't know, maybe it was just the obstacle core of the boat. You know, the cage is a lot taller than me. Maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm like, thank God it was there. Because, I mean, he would have had a, he would I mean, running straight at me he would have hit the back of the boat and he couldn't have got to me then but just running around the boat he could he could have plucked me right off the top of that thing with ease you know that's that was the whole thing in my mind the whole time that i seen him was in my mind was trying to you know todd focus and what are we going to do we need to get out of here you know and trying to do that with all that stress on you of seeing what you're seeing and knowing what you're seeing. Cause I knew what I was seeing. I knew my mind wasn't playing tr- tricks on me. I, you know, I, I'm pretty open minded. It was just trying to figure out how am I going to get out of this? Because this thing here is it, going to get you, you know, and he could have got me. No, no problem. No questions asked. And I just thank, just thank the Lord that he was there watching me. I've been through some pretty rough times in my life and he's always been there to help me. And I just thank God. I really do. Yeah. Thank God every day that I wake up in the morning, you know, it's a blessing every day we wake up. That was a blessing to be able to get out of there. Yeah. It almost makes me wonder if, um, you know, one thing that I've, I've kind of thought of or thought of over the years and, and I could be wrong on this theory, but, you know, I think a lot in a lot of situations where they're pissed like that and they're obviously uh, doing some sort of display to make you want to leave. Um, sometimes I wonder if they're nervous because, you know, when when we become fearful, Todd, uh, if you ever see someone in true fear, they don't do anything. They'll just stand there and look right. at you. They don't react. Right. And I almost wonder if that kind of saves our skin sometimes. Because you aren't freaking out. I mean, you're freaking out on the inside, but on the outside, it looks like you just kind of climb back in your seat and then turn on the motor and, you know, enjoy the windstorm, you know, type of thing. And I almost wonder if that throws them off because you really aren't showing fear on an outward appearance. That's my own opinion. I could be wrong on on that, you know. Right. 
Well, if that's if that was the case of it, I was thankful for that, <laughs> and I was thankful for getting out of there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad that you shared it, Todd. I mean, there's a lot of people who go out and, you know, they'll take their kids out looking for these sayings. And, you know, I know I sound like a Debbie Downer when I'm like, "Ah, I don't know if I take your kids out there looking for these things because you don't know quite the one you're going to run into. Right. Before all this and before I called you guys and uh, I told you all when I had talked to some woman some years back, I had put the report in there and then they, they turned me on to that BFRO thing. That's where I was really, I put in my general area of where I was at and there was like six or seven different sightings there. There was one sighting with a fishing guide, uh, airline pilot and a NASA astronaut on there. And they seen one walking down the seashore or down the water line in Merritt Island wildlife refuge, which is probably about, about 15 miles from where I was at, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, I'd say maybe 15, 20 miles. And I mean, their sighting was, I was like, yeah, oh, I wish mine, you know, maybe it was like that one, you know, that they seen it just walking down the shoreline, down the side of the river, uh, digging up shellfish. And it really didn't, it really didn't, give any type of description of what it was except for it was brown and i'm i was thinking of, in my mind i wonder can they travel that far i mean do they usually stay in the area that you've seen them at i mean if that's the case if they stay in the area around of where they're seeing them at am i a lot safer going down the south river and, and uh most likely wouldn't see one there or I mean, you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to ask you? Yeah, no, I think that the range is pretty far. I think that, um, right. you know, there is, well, I mean, I can tell you, I think you and I were talking about the other day, um, as far, or no, it was a biologist I was talking to. Coincidentally, that biologist, he's kind of a famous biologist. I've been trying to get him to come on the show, but uh, I don't know if I'll be able to or not. He worked for the federal government all of his life, and I've looked up his work. It's pretty impressive work, but... You know, him and I were talking and I was telling him about, uh, well, I'll give you one example, the, this one here in the Pacific Northwest. And I've probably had a dozen people see this thing. And the reason why I know it's the same one, everyone talks about this scar on his chest and he's aggressive as hell. Everyone that comes in contact with him, he's aggressive as hell. And um, but what's fascinating is as you start listening to reports and then you look at the calendar I can almost kind of tell you where he's going to be at. He moves in this weird circular motion. And when it gets hotter, he's up towards Mount St. Helens. When he gets cooler, people see him down near the Columbia River. And it's this weird. And that's a. am talking about, you know, that's that's a huge range for them to move. Um, but right. don't be thrown off by the, the different islands that you're out there. Uh, there's reports of them in the Puget Sound swimming, uh, out there swimming. Uh, and, you know, what are they going over to Vancouver Island? I mean, that, that's a long swim. Um, right. So I, I don't think if you go 15 miles away, uh, you're not going to run into it again. Uh, hopefully you don't. Uh, it's hard to say what set this thing off. I have also learned that from talking to eyewitnesses, a lot of times, Loud noise seems to piss them off, like people on motorcycles or ATVs or like an airboat. Um, yes, the it, airboats are really, really loud. Yeah. Could have been that. Makes me wonder if the noise kind of pisses them off. You know, makes it, it's kind of like yeah. when you're sitting in your living room and a guy goes down the street in a Harley and you, you know, your pictures on the wall start rattling. You're like, man, tone it down a little bit, guy. Um, yeah, I, right, I right. wonder if the, I mean, that's a terrible example, but you know what I mean? I wonder if it's that sort of thing to where the loud noise irritates them, you know? Yeah, I could see. I mean, when I'm driving on dry ground to get where I want to get the tips, especially on my prop, they whistle real loud and they're at like, uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, the frequency level I think is right around 600. Uh, I think that's why they say it's 600 mile an hour, but it's a really ear piercing whistling noise. And it's loud. So, I mean, I wear double ear protection when I'm on my boat for that. 
I used to wear just regular earmuffs, and after four or five hours of running down the river and all, I'd have the worst headache in the world from this propeller that I run on my boat. So now I run earplugs and earmuffs. I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to change the prop on the boat because it works so well. It's got a lot of push. But if I couldn't go out on a boat and run it for any length of time with no ear protection on, it'd be, it, it would hurt. It probably would hurt your ears really, really bad. Really, now I'm thinking about it. It could have been that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, if it's All any con- is- consolation prize, you gave it to him on your way out. So he kind of lost yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he got blown to hell. That years no, I don't think he could stand up behind that boat. Now he may have. I mean, he was a really big fella, and he looked like he was more than enough strong. But it's I've been behind him before, where they've left and they've lifted me up off the ground. You know, I believe it. I be, I would and, love to have an I airboat mean, man scru- cruising around out there in Florida. That sounds oh, like heaven. River down here, give me a call. Yeah, I'll take you out on a river. I might just do that. I might just do that. You know, don't you find it bizarre? Something so big and so large, you think we'd be finding them everywhere. But it, it, yeah, that, that's one thing I thought of after my encounter. I don't know if you went through that or not, Todd. I remember thinking, how the hell does something so big? Why? And we haven't caught up with this thing yet. This thing's a giant running through. I mean, people should be run, running into this thing nonstop. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, he was definitely big. He was super huge. And how, and, and, yeah, I'm just, I, I always, I, I belong to an airboat association. We got about 400 members. And I've been wanting to bring it up and ask, but I don't, I don't know. But now that I'm getting older, I really don't care anymore. I was going to bring it up. I don't know, just kind of like hand around it. But, all the running and all the people that I know have been running out on that river. And for the years I've been running out on that river, I've been running on that river now for over 30 years. And all the people I've seen out there running, and like my father in law, my father in law, I wish he could remember now. He's having, he got Huntington's real bad, so he, he doesn't really remember a lot of stuff anymore. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, I guess it happens with age, you know. But, I was always wanting to hear somebody say it, especially in our meetings. They have all kinds of runs at night and guys go out there at night. They've invited me. I've been out there. If I'm running down the river and stuff, South River, they have races every once in a while up North River. They'll invite me to go up there, but it's right at the Oaks where they have the races. I don't go. I just, even if there's 20 people up there, I don't go. I just don't go. I know it's up there. I know what I've seen, and I know that me by myself or 20 people with me wouldn't have been able to do anything against this guy. You know, and I don't want no part of it, really. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I've had a lot of uh, what's yeah. bizarre is I don't know how long the St. John's River is, but I've actually had a few people on the show that had encounters on along that St. John's River. That's the only reason why yeah. I, I recognize the name is because I've had other people on. And people are funny, too. You know, there's a lot of people who will have encounters and they don't want to talk about it and for different reasons. Some people it's not necessarily that people they're afraid other people think they're crazy. Um, it, you'll find with a lot of hunters after they have an encounter that they'll brush it off as some weird bear they ran into or, and deep down they know that's not true, but they don't want to give up hunting. Um, you know, when they, I'll tell you the other, yesterday when you were talking, you were talking about that hunter and all that stuff. We had an incident here two years ago out on my, I belong to a gun club right out here in town. And, uh, right outside the gun, hunt club, this is actually made it in our little town thing that they have. There were shoats. You know what a shoat is? No, uh, what hogs. is it? What is it? Uh, a hog. You ever heard of call a shot? Sh- I, I call them shoats sometimes. People get thrown off. No, no. Sorry. But there's hogs <laughs> up in the tree, and the branches were run through the hog. I And, I, you know, I forgot for the life of me, and then I remembered that. And then you told me, you, you brought up about that hunter. Remember you said something about that hunter had the gun was bent and, yeah. and there was no recollect, recollecting on how in the hell would that would have happened. Right. And I was thinking about that last night. I was sitting out back in my family room 
And I remembered a story, and it was only like two years ago. Right out there, in, it was in Palm Bay, Florida, which is the next town over from, I'm in Melbourne, that they found hogs, two hogs, up in a tree. And these are, these are pretty good-sized hogs, probably pretty close to 250 pounds, 300-pound hogs, run down on a branch. So something grabbed them and pushed them. I mean, they were up in the tree. I don't know. Yeah, it's bizarre. They're definitely out there, though, Todd. Well, you know they're out yeah, there, but I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, people... I never would have, I, I never would have thought of it until I seen what I seen, and then, yeah. like I said, now I know what's out there, and I know that I, I have to do what I have to do to protect myself and my family, and I don't go out there no more, especially at night. I'll go out there during the day if I'm running with a lot of guys, and we'll go down South River. There's not a lot of tree cover, very wide open field. So if there was anything out there, you would see it way before you'd even have to get up on it. And that's why I, I when I go out on the airboat, if I run and stuff, I'll go down South River. But I don't go all the time. My wife will tell you, my boat's been sitting in my backyard now for well over a year. I haven't been out on it. I just don't have a whole lot of notion about going out on it, but I really don't want to sell it. Because I know it's my, it's a freedom <laughs> when you're married as long as I have. You yeah. try to hold on to those little freedoms, you know? Yeah, I get it so completely. I kinda, yeah, yeah. I, I think you did the right thing, though, Todd. And I always tell people, you know, don't interact. With, if you come across a situation like that, don't interact with them. Don't provoke them. Try and leave as quickly as you can. And, uh, you know, uh, nine times out of 10, they won't come after you. I mean, and that's my opinion. I could be, again, I could be wrong. Just from talking to so many people, I think that you did the right thing. Uh, don't provoke it. Don't, you know, just leave. And a lot of times right. they won't follow you. They'll leave you alone at that point. And I think in the situation you're in, again, I think you were in a really bad situation. It could have gone bad really quick. A lot of the behavior that you describe in my, this is my own personal opinion, which is irrelevant, but I think that when they are doing that, I think it's trying to intimidate you to leave. And because, right. you know, honestly, right. he didn't have to do any of that. He could have came and just popped your head off and uh, oh, yeah. no one would ever. Yeah. So I think a yeah. lot of it's intimidation to try and get you to, to go away. Yeah, well, it worked. <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> i didn't want no part of that buddy oh and I'm... yeah i you know he it would have been there's no nothing there i i don't at night i don't even i'll, I'll tell you just god honest truth and i when i go out there during the daytime and all i carry a gun out there during the day you're not supposed to, I don't, you're not allowed to have one at night i'd be scared to death to shoot one and fear that i don't know what the hell you'd have to have really to kill it I mean, I, I carry a 44 Magnum in my boat and I know what I've seen and I've, and I've shot hogs with it and know what the pistol does to a hog. I mean, it'll wipe, it kills the hogs, but I don't know if that would actually do it. I really don't. And I'd be scared to death to even think of shooting one. Maybe that's what would happen to that guy uh, that had the barrel all bent to hell. Maybe he shot yeah. the thing and it pissed him off and he grabbed a hold of him and did what he needed to do, went to work, and uh, and that was the end of that gun and everything, you know? Yeah, and for the audience, what, what Todd's referencing is, I had a cop call me a couple of years back and told me to look into uh, this weird death, and, you know, I'm not a cop, I'm not a detective, I, you know, I don't know what I'm looking for, uh, but what happened was, it was a hunter, and his neck broke, and he was stuffed in a tree, and his barrel had been bent, his whole rifle, and it was on the ground, and they chalked it up to he fell out of the tree and it bent his rifle. And uh, I, I don't buy any of it because um, none of it adds up. But for the audience, that's what what Todd's referencing. OK, I didn't know we were sorry about that. Um, I didn't mean to bring that up. No, no, no. It's fine to bring it up. Yeah, it's, it's a bizarre account. And I think you're probably right. I think he probably took a shot. This is me speculating. I think he probably took a shot. Right. And whether he hit it or not, uh, it he got the, the, you know, he got the working end of one of these things and he lost, you know? And so I'm with yeah. you. I think a lot of times, you know, you got to be careful popping off shots of these things because you better have a gun big enough to, 
take one down. And the other problem you run into with these things is, and again, this is my opinion. I don't think they run around alone. I think there's, if you yeah. see one, there's probably two or three more nearby. Yeah. And, and that's later on and me going on the internet and looking at what I'd have looked at and everything and to see stories and hear stories about when whoever seen one seen the one, but when the one ended up leaving or they left in a different way than I guess the uh, Sasquatch wanted them to leave, they seen one or two more. And that could have very well been my whole thing. Maybe he had a family or something there, you know, and me being up and over the threat to whatever he had. I've thought of that, too. I don't know if, if that's a possibility or anything. Yeah, it could be. Maybe I was... Ch- I was too close to something that he cherished, you know, and, and my whole mind was one was enough to see. And, uh, yeah, I get it. You know, I'm just, I try to make sense of this stuff a lot. And it just, I get to the point where the emotion starts getting taken over. And then I just quickly, I just, you know, just kind of like pass it off and I'll go, get my mind busy about something else and try to get off of it. I usually don't talk about it a whole lot and I usually don't bring it up. I, I'll get in these little spurts and I'll look online and then I see different things. I just heard about a month ago, I got on Spotify on radio uh, on my, my son gave me Spotify for father's day. Oh yeah. And I, and I put it in on there and then your thing came up. So I started listening to him. And I pretty much, because I still don't know a whole lot about all this. I really don't want to know a whole lot about it, but I just try to make sense of it, I guess. Yeah. So that's why I'll talk to different, like you guys, because you guys have seen them probably, or maybe you were in the boat that I was in. So that's why I try to hit you guys up every once in a while, just to try to make sense of stuff. I guess. Yeah. yeah. No, I get completely what you mean. It's it's one of those things to where uh, you'll never make sense of it, but we try. I think as humans, we try to make sense of like, well, what did I see? Why did it? Why did it react that way? Uh, and you play it over and over and over in your head. And sometimes you need to kind of, you know, really help me honestly, Todd is is listening to other people's encounters because I I thought, man, did I am I crazy? Did I um you know, have delusions for a short point in my life. And I saw something that wasn't there. And then after a while you start listening to other people and you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I saw. Yeah. That's exactly what it was doing. And they're definitely out there. These things are out there and not every encounter is going to be happy encounter. Go ahead, Doug. All right. Yeah. I believe it. And I believe in them. And, and, And maybe it's a good thing knowing that that's out there. At least I know it's out there. You know, so it's not an unknown to me anymore. Yeah. But maybe uh, it's a good thing for that reason. Did I know that they're out there? Um, Maybe to uh, have awareness, a better awareness. I know a lot of times when I was a younger kid and all the stuff that I used to do out there, and I never really paid attention to a lot of stuff out there. Now I do all the time, everywhere I go out there. I have a lot more awareness, especially me. My It's usually me and my youngest son go out there the most. I mean, I say young, he's 17, but me and him go out there a lot. He enjoys going out there. But I also, you know, we talk and stuff, and I've told him that there's other things out here that make it really dangerous and the aspect of what I've seen, and he knows about that. And, you know, I guess there's a sense of actually, actually you have to respect all that. I mean, him not seeing it, so it doesn't affect him like it affects me. And he still pushes me a lot to want to go out there and go camping and stuff. But I really don't have the notion ever wanting to do that. And fear of, because it's all, it's all, uh, let me see. It it all involves the night. And like I said, I don't have too much of a problem during the day going out there, especially down south. And I'll go to all around there. And during the day, it really doesn't bother me a whole lot. Maybe if I seen one during the day, it would have been different. I don't know. 
but because it was night and it's already hard enough to see anything out there and usually at night it's black out there you can't see nothing you know what kind of lights you got black what kind of lights you put on those uh those airboats like a light bar like no 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 i have a headlight i made it out of a uh hard hat liner the inside liner oh okay and it's it's got two little rods on it and i got a little reflective uh like a lens in the middle it's just made out of metal it's chrome plated on the inside and it's got a 200 watt bulb in it and i got it on a rheostat so i could turn it higher or low because depending on if it's really wet outside you won't want a real bright light because then uh the light will hit the water and the dew and it'll reflect back at you and you won't be able to see the frog so you want to be able to turn it real low so you can just pick up the frog's eyeballs when you're out there frogging. So it's, but when I looked in the area where I was looking, you know, I, and I have it on all the time, it just plugs in in the back and I keep it on my head. It's pretty much just reaching down. I got a rheostat and I just turned it up. And it's, when it's all the way on high, it lights up a big area. It's like a Q beam. Oh, you yeah, know what a Q beam is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's like a Q beam. It, it lights up an area like a Q beam. So you see the area really good. It lit up the, that back there. And like I said, he wasn't too far away from the back of my boat. No, I mean, 25 like close. to 30 feet is, yeah. Yeah, way yeah. too close. And then, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it'll stay with it you. Starts hitting me. Yeah, it'll stay with you, Todd. I mean, it, it's one of those things that never goes away. But it, you know, at least now going around second time, if you ever go out, you're on high alert and you're more aware of the situation as opposed to just rolling up on shore and and um, going. Hmm, I wonder what's screaming. I mean, you'll kind of know the second time around. I'm not going to shore. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, it's. Uh, no, I don't. I don't blame you for feeling the way you're feeling. Everyone feels that way. I went through that for the longest time. I had nightmares about what I saw and I had a hard time sleeping after what I saw. And it's something that shouldn't exist. You know, three months, buddy, three months. I was a mess for three months. I was a mess at home. I swear from that point on for three months, I had a really hard time. And, and it just was, and then at that time, I was doing a lot. Our, the shuttle program was really been its height. I was doing a lot of traveling. So I was away from this area. I went to Africa and, and, and Spain a lot. So I was way far away from here, but it was just, it was like, it just couldn't get rid of it. You know, it was just there over and over and over. And then you get to thinking about it over and over and over. And it was just there, you know, and it just played on me all the time. It really it tore me up for, Quite a while. It's PTSD. It's like torture. It's like being tortured, you know, but your own mind's doing it to you. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah, and it's one of those encounters I think people should really pay attention to, Todd. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share it. Uh, and I know it's not easy for you when we were talking the other day and, and you were going through the encounter. I know it was a struggle for you to kind of relive that moment. Uh, but I do appreciate you coming on because it's a warning to people out there who are uh, looking for these things or who actively go out and search for these creatures. And, you know, it's a warning. Be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. And the one you run into may not be the one you want to run into. Right. And I just say, you know, my thing out there is just say that people, I guess, would be, I mean, what, what, yeah, watch what you see on TV. And just be very aware. And and like I said, I you know, I think in my mind was I really lucky seeing this. No, I know in my mind, I no way, I would never ever want to see one ever again. And just I would just want to tell everybody, just please be careful for God's sake. You know, no doubt. That, you know, no it doubt. was scary. It was very very bad. Yeah, it's definitely scary. Definitely scary, 100%. And it's good advice. Be careful out there. And if you ever need to chat, you have my cell phone number, Todd. Feel free to shoot me a text or give me a call. Um, I know the encounter isn't the easiest thing to kind of relive, and it was one of the most terrifying moments of your life. Uh, But I really do appreciate you taking the time to come on and and share what happened to you. 
I enjoyed talking with you. Thank you so much, Todd. Yes, sir. It was nice talking to you, too. God bless you, and, and have a blessed day. You as well. Thanks again, Todd. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. If you get a chance to check out sasquatchronicles.com, you can become a member and get additional shows. Until next time, everyone. 